present parishioners and partners of PG, and to all of our virtual visitors, we are so glad that you have tuned in uh, to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church on this morning. Brothers and sisters, we have celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, just a couple of Sundays ago, uh, but we want to know what next, what now? Uh, we don't want to celebrate death so much that we forget about Jesus Christ's life. So we want to just invite you to share with us uh, in the sermon, Life After Death and Resurrection. I pray that this is helpful for you. Amen and God bless you. <laughs> I've seen
Let us all just say amen, 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 amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would, go with me uh, to the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew the 10th chapter, Matthew the 10th chapter, Matthew the 10th chapter, Matthew the 10th chapter, or we'll just read just a few verses. Uh, we'll read the 7th verse, we'll read the 8th verse, the 16th verse, and the 22nd verse. Uh, we'll read Matthew uh, the 10th chapter, uh, the 7th verse, the 8th verse, the 16th verse, and the 22nd verse. Amen? So, this is how it starts. In the King James version it says and as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand it says heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received so freely you should give the 16th verse says behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. The 22nd verse says it like this, And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Brothers and sisters, I just want to use for a theme or a framework for the time that we have together just for a few minutes. I want to use this theme, life after death and resurrection. Life after death and resurrection. Brothers and sisters, as we have celebrated the triumph and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, might I remind you that while Jesus' death is the bridge to eternal life, his life is the substance or the planks in which the bridge is made of. Too often, we pay such great attention to his death that we holler loud that he died and he rose again, but we never pay attention to the importance of his life. Jesus Christ didn't just die for us to be redeemed, but he lived so that our lives could be transformed. And I want to say that again, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ didn't just die for us, but he lived for us. He was not only a resurrected Christ, but he was a revolutionary savior. So therefore, brothers and sisters, we don't want to forget the intense ministry that Jesus engaged on on his way to die at Calvary's cross. As we've perused the passage prior to the corona season, we discover that Jesus has been liberating the oppressed. He's been lifting up downtrodden hearts. He's been lifting the depressed. He's been healing the sick. He's been enlightening those who were blind. He's been casting out demons. Jesus is living a living ministry. Jesus is living ministry and not just blowing smoke. And brothers and sisters, we, as a reflection of Jesus Christ, we've got to get to the place where we're living out ministry and not just blowing smoke. Jesus is the picture-perfect portrait of preaching and pastoral care in progress. He's living out ministry. He's not just talking the talk, but Jesus, at this juncture in ministry, he's walking the walk. He's modeling ministry. 
He's and also not only is he modeling ministry, but brothers and sisters, he's molding disciples. And I suggest that it is important that while we are engaging in ministry, that we take the opportunity to mold disciples because Jesus Christ called for us as believers to not only preach and teach, but we've been called to mold those to understand and love Jesus. If you pay attention to the text, you'll discover the change in language. It goes from calling, Jesus goes from calling them disciples to calling them apostles. Let me say that one more time, brothers and sisters, before somebody forget or misunderstand. He goes from calling them disciples to calling them apostles. He calls them disciples, those who follow, those who hear, those who, brothers and sisters, are pupils to those who are apostles, those who go and who are sent to do the will and the work of God. In other words, let me say it one more time. He goes from being, he, call, he talks to uh, those that he's molding and he's calling them. The jargon and the language change from disciples to uh, apostles. This suggests that the Savior's desire is that after you learn how to do, you must go and do. After you learn how to do, you have to learn or go and do. Might I suggest, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, that Jesus' life's example is uh, to uh, evoke us and provoke us to do a few things, to know to grow and to go. Jesus' life ought to evoke us to know, to grow, and to go. In other words, brothers and sisters, we ought to spend time in Scripture so that we know, first of all, the Word of God. Then we ought to meditate on uh, the Gospel so that we can grow in the word of God, and then we ought to abide in God's will so that we can go and spread the word of God. Brothers and sisters, there are so many times in the, in the gospel where Jesus says, go ye therefore. Brothers and sisters, don't ask God to guide your steps if you are not willing to move your feet. Believers ought to have uh, the attitude such as Isaiah. Isaiah, uh, when Isaiah uh, heard the Lord of God, when, when Isaiah heard the Lord God in the silence uh, of his uh, sacred space and in the solace of his own secret closet, he heard the voice of the Lord inquiring about who we shall send and who will go for us. And I want to pause parenthetically just to say, brothers and sisters, silence is not always bad. Sometimes we need silence so that we can hear from God. And I want to say this, brothers and sisters, sometimes God speaks the loudest in our silence. Sometimes God speaks the loudest Brothers and sisters, when we are quiet, many of us are so busy trying to get back to normal that we cannot hear God's voice. And if we look at the text of Isaiah, Isaiah, immediately after Isaiah heard the Lord's voice, he did not procrastinate, he did not postpone, he did not prolong to pray on it. He proceeded to say, here I am, send me. And brothers and sisters, what I share with you is that he took some time 
to be able to hear God before he did anything. Brothers and sisters, we want to get back to normal. I know we want to get back to church. We want to get back to work. We want to get back to doing things like we've been doing things. But what I share with you, you ought to hear God first because perhaps God is trying to tell you something for your life. I remember an old nursery rhyme, uh, Mother Goose. Mother Goose stuck with me as a child. Uh, and Mother Goose said something like this. says, a man of words and not of deeds is like a gold, uh, a garden full of weeds. She says, a man of words and not of deeds is like a garden full of weeds. Somebody say, well, Pastor Litcher, I don't know what you mean. Uh, well, well, this is what I'm sharing with you is, brothers and sisters, a garden, uh, it takes work for it to be a garden. You can say a field is a garden, but it takes work for it to become a reality. As we consider this in the light of our text, once Jesus had ascended to heaven, his apostles became his workers. His apostles became his hands. And at this juncture, they, like Jesus, they were able to touch folks and heal. They had stuff to do. Jesus calls his disciples uh, and brothers and sisters. Uh, it's important for us to be able to discern God's call. When you have authority, that means that you have all of heaven backing you. So there are a few things about this text that I uh, feel like emerges to me, and I think that it may help you. First of all, brothers and sisters, what the text is sharing with us is that, number one, we have to live expectantly. Live expectantly. Live expectantly. You've got to live expectantly. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 shows us in the text that we have to live expectantly. It says, as you go, preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Brothers and sisters, living expectantly means living your life with the confidence and hope in, trans in the transforming and revolutionizing power of Jesus Christ. This hope was a real hope because it was a hope that Jesus tried to instill in his disciples before he even died and before he rose again. Because it's easy, brothers and sisters, to have a hope in Christ in the absence of crisis. Let me say that one more time. Somebody didn't get it. Brothers and sisters, it's easy to have a hope in Christ before you have any crisis. Brothers and sisters, it's easy to think about Jesus Christ as he's already risen. But brothers and sisters, what about your faith? How is your faith when you face crisis? How is your faith when you are in the midst of perplexities and trouble. How is your faith? Do you still trust God when the sun is not shining? Do you still trust God when you have trouble on every hand? Do you still trust God even in the midst of a coronavirus? Do you still trust God even though you didn't get your stimulus check and you were slated to get it last week? Brothers and sisters, do you still trust God even though you can't trace them? That's what Jesus was trying to instill in his disciples. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, I'm reminded about uh, I'm reminded about Thomas because he was trying to get Thomas to trust him, even though he couldn't trace him. He said, "Hey, look, Thomas said, hey, look, I, I ain't going to trust. I ain't going to trust. I, I just ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. That's why the Bible calls him doubting Thomas. He said, I ain't going to trust. I ain't going to trust until I can stick my fingers in his womb until I can see, brothers and sisters, his, his, his scars until I can see Jesus. Uh, the things that he's gone through, brothers and sisters, 
That's why I share with you what Jesus Christ was saying is sometimes we've got to have faith in Jesus Christ, even though we don't know what he's doing. That's why he said that blessed is the one who can uh, see uh, and believe. Blessed is the one who can, that even though you can't see, you still believe. Brothers and sisters, we've got to live expectantly. That's why the Apostle Paul says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. Brothers and sisters, we've got to get to a place and a position with our faith that we live with faith and hope in God. And brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that faith and hope in God satisfies God. Because the word of God says without faith, it is impossible to please God. They proclaimed the word. The word was only effective because they believed what they preached. Brothers and sisters, you've got to believe what you preach. You've got to believe what you share uh, with unbelief. you got to believe that the word of God is not only true for them, but it's true for you. Right? So they expected that when people heard the word of God, that the kingdom of God was near. In other words, when they heard or when they preached the word of God, they believed that the sick would be healed. They believed that hearts would be mended. They believed that lives would be set free. They believed that something extraordinary would happen in the lives of folks that trusted in God. And I want you to know that if you trust in God, there's some extraordinary things will happen in your life. First of all, brothers and sisters, we've got to live expectantly. Nextly, we've got to live generously. A lot of folks want to live expectantly. They want to live uh, expecting the Lord to do something for them, but they don't want to live generously. In other words, expecting to do something for other folks or expecting to do something for God. We've got to live generously. Uh, verse 8 says, freely you have received. So freely you give. Living generously is directly connected to living expectantly. We've got to live like we know that the Lord would take care of us even during this time of scarcity. We've got to believe that even though we don't know where our sources or resources are coming from, we've got to trust that God will deliver us. We've got to trust that God will provide for us. We've got to tr trust that God will do what he said he would do. Jesus had given his disciples a task to perform. Uh, he equipped them for the task, he made their purpose clear, and he gave them clear instructions as to how to perform their duties. And then he instructed them to not make provisions for their own needs because he had somebody else set up to provide for them while they carried out God's commission. And I want somebody to know that God is providing for you while you take care of God's commission. They were to trust God. They were to follow God because brothers and sisters, God was going to take care of them. That's what it comes down to not only for the apostles, but that's what it comes down for us is that we've got to get to the place and the point where we fully trust God. They had to trust that the one uh, who was commissioning them uh, on this occasion 
was going to provide for their need. Brothers and sisters, I just want to shout by myself because when I look back over my life, and I bet you if you just look back over your life, God will supply for your needs if he's called you to do what He's called you to do. I want to cut across the field because I just saw that I only have about a few more minutes on uh, this uh, video. But we have, uh, first of all, we got to live uh, expectantly. We've got to live expectantly. Nextly, we have to live generously. Brothers and sisters, I want to pause uh, for a moment uh, of practical teaching and say, you've got to live wisely. You've got to live wisely. You've got to live wisely. Uh, brothers, just, we look at verses, uh, verse 16 says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as the brothers and sisters, we've got to live wisely, wisely, especially in this world, brothers and sisters, where uh, administration has told us to take uh, disinfectants and inject it into. Don't don't do anything foolish like that. But we've got to live wisely. Let's jump back to the text because I'm gonna get. Oh, hey, and in just a minute, Jesus was using similes. He was using uh, literary devices to drive his point forward. He was using figures of speech that compare uh, two unlike things to instruct his disciples in how to behave in their ministry. Just before he tells them, to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. He warns them that they are being sent out uh, as sheep among wolves. And I want to suggest this to you today, brothers and sisters, is that um, when we talk about sheep and wolves, the world then as now was hostile towards believers. They were not hostile accidentally, but they were hostile purposely toward the believers of God. Wolves are intentional about harm that they inflict on sheep. In such an environment, the question becomes, how can we advance the word and the kingdom of God effectively without becoming prey or without becoming predators? How can we push the word of God forward without becoming prey or without becoming predators? Jesus taught his followers to be Christ-like in a godless world. And I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, we are Christian folks trying to bring the word of God into fruition and to reality, but we are living in a godless world. Brothers and sisters, what Jesus shares with us is that we must combine the wisdom of a serpent with the harmlessness of a dove. And as we take the gospel to a hostile world, we must be wise, avoiding the snares that is set for us. And we must be innocent uh, or we must be blameless serving God without blame. I don't have time today uh, just to, uh, to brothers and sisters, I'll wrap it up by saying this. You got to live You've got to live expectantly. You've got to live generously. And you've also got to live wisely. You've got to live expectantly. You've got to live generously. And you've got to live wisely. All of this foolish talk that is out today, you got to be careful because I look at uh, I look at the news and I see that uh, our president has said something about 
uh, injecting disinfectant in your bodies. There's folks who have not taken wise counsel and there was over 30 folks in New York who has done what the president has said to do. We want to be live. We want to live expectantly. We want to live generously and we want to live wisely. And if we do that, brothers and sisters, we can live victoriously. God bless you, brothers and sisters. The door of the Lord's church is open. The door of God's house is open. If you desire to be a part of Pleasant Green uh, Missionary Baptist Church, the door is open for you. And the invitation is extended uh, for discipleship. If you desire to be a part of the Lord's church uh, through, through the ministry of Pleasant Green, we extend to you this opportunity. Uh, you can reach out to us through ghpruitt at gmail.com, ghpruitt uh, at gmail.com. Uh, you can reach out to us and we will have someone to uh, respond to you within 48 hours. Uh, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for you. And we are thankful uh, for all of those who have been faithful in your giving. We are thankful for you. We are thankful for you. And we just want to offer um, our modes of giving. If you want to be generous during this time, uh, we have uh, several modes of giving. You can send a check or a money order uh, to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church uh, at 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. You can send a check or a money order to 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Well, brothers and sisters, you can give online uh, at www.pgmbcstl.org. You can give online and we'll be thankful for that. God bless you for your faithfulness. Brothers and sisters, we also want to welcome all of our guests. If you are a virtual visitor, we are thankful for you. We are thankful that you have logged in. And I just want to say this to you. You are welcome. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you have gotten what you have come to get. You've logged on what you've, uh, you, when you've logged on, you've gotten what you have come to uh, get from God. And I pray that God has given you something through the word. So therefore, we want to pause and tell you thank you. And we want to pause for a word of benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. May we all say amen. Be blessed until next time.